So in the previous video, we left off with this bolus structure that was a result of the oral cavity's mechanical and chemical digestion. So we completed ingestion, which was to put food into the digestive tract. That's the first compartment, the oral cavity. And upon putting the food into that first compartment, we began a bit of digestion that resulted in this bolus structure. We're now at the pharynx, and this is going to be the place at which we need to swallow the bolus. So this will be the next compartment. So we'll do the next compartment as number two. And here we'll entitle the number two compartment as the pharynx. Okay, so what happens here? The pharynx is just simply speaking the throat. It's a complicated way to just say throat. And this is shown in figure 41.10. In terms of its function, what we notice about the pharynx is that it serves as a hallway, meaning that it connects two points. Specifically, the pharynx is the hallway to both the digestive system, meaning the continuation of the next compartment, and also, as we'll see when we talk about respiration, the respiratory system. So there's two paths that can basically be taken by whatever's entering the pharynx, whatever's entering the throat. Either you can continue on to the digestive system or enter the respiratory system. This is going to be critical when we're doing some sort of action like swallowing. Because during swallowing, and this is going to be of that bolus that we prepared in the mouth, in the oral cavity, during swallowing there's going to have to be, absolutely, there needs to be the following event to occur. There needs to be this structure called the epiglottis, which is located within the pharynx area. This is just a small uh, flap of tissue, okay? It's a small tissue flap. And it can go up or down, can basically open and close. It's a flap that can go into a closed position or an open position. The epiglottis, as a flap, tissue flap, it absolutely must, and look at the situation here, during swallowing, it must cover the glottis. Epi just means around or near, surrounding the, what structure? The glottis. And the glottis is simply going to be the opening to the trachea. So we'll write that down. Opening to trachea. Now, if you know uh, something about the respiratory system, the respiratory system will probably utilize this trachea. This is going to be a direct connection to the lungs. Okay, It's going to go down towards the lungs. But that's not what we're, what we're trying to do. We're trying to continue this hallway to the digestive system. So when you're swallowing a bolus, which is a structure, a compound, let's say, that's involved in digestion, it must go to the digestive tract and area and continue to the next compartment. But in order to do that, you need to make sure that the compartment that's for respiration, the trachea, is blocked. So you cover the trachea opening by covering it with this epiglottis. Anytime you swallow, if you do it right now, if you swallow just your saliva, you will feel your epiglottis closing and that's going to be the covering of the glottis. That's done in order to ensure that the food goes down what people like to term the correct pipe. And if this does not happen, well, basically, when this happens, we're, we're first going to state that this ensures and makes sure that the food goes down the specific area that it needs to go down. Food must go to the digestive system, not the respiratory system. And if it goes to the respiratory system, what do you experience? This is what happens when you feel the sensation of choking. When food or water or whatever it may be that needs to be swallowed and sent to the digestive system gets sent to the respiratory system, you will cough uncontrollably. This is in an attempt to stop or sort of push out whatever went down the wrong tube, the respiratory tube in this situation, more more commonly referred to as the trachea. And this is all because the epiglottis did not close over the glottis. If you chew too fast and swallow too fast or drink too fast, whatever it may be, you may not be able to have this covering occur efficiently and thus you will experience choking. And if you experience choking, you are directly blocking respiration. Thus, you will be suffocating for air. And that's why it's very important to know certain things like CPR or the Heimlich maneuver, whatever it may be, um, when it's in terms of food going down the correct pipe. So that's our pharynx. This is the hallway to the digestive system. This is the throat. We want to make sure that it's correctly covered so that we have food go down the correct pipe. Upon leaving the throat, being swallowed correctly, you are now going to then enter the third compartment. 
The third compartment is known as the esophagus. The esophagus is the correct digestive tube. It is not the trachea, but it's the, direct, it's the digestive tube. This is going to be a muscular tube. And whenever we mention muscle in the context of digestion, you should know that the muscle here is primarily going to be smooth, involuntary muscle. So the muscular tube that's going to be located between the point that's before it, the compartment before it, which is the pharynx, and the compartment after it, which is the stomach. So now, whenever we go from one compartment to the other, there's always going to be a sphincter. We didn't mention the sphincter from oral cavity to the pharynx because it wasn't mentioned in your notes, but this is often just referred to as the upper esophageal sphincter. We don't need to know that. But here there's a sphincter you need to know. It's the first one that's mentioned, and this is the sphincter between the pharynx and the stomach. The esophagus is going to lead into the stomach, and in order to go into the stomach, it must pass, the bolus must pass what is known as the cardiac sphincter. So what we have is the esophagus. On the bottom of the esophagus, there's something, it's also called the lower esophageal sphincter that is going to open from the esophagus into the stomach. And it's commonly referred to as the cardiac sphincter. The reason why is because this is actually the sphincter that's complicated or, or it receives complications during something like heartburn. Let's look at why. The cardiac sphincter is a valve. A valve that opens and closes via smooth muscle at the junction at the space between the pharynx and the stomach, as we said. At the space between the pharynx and stomach. So what's going to happen here is the following. You need to open this so that whatever bolus is being pushed through the esophagus enters the esophagus and goes smoothly into the stomach. And this opening is going to be mediated by a, via an involuntary muscle, which would be, of course, smooth muscle. So again, we said that a sphincter, whatever sphincter it may be, is a muscular valve. It's a circular ring-like valve. It'll open and close via smooth muscle involuntarily when, let's say, it feels the presence of a bolus that needs to go to the stomach, the next compartment. And that's the cardiac sphincter. Now, what happens sometimes is if the stomach, which is very acidic, as we'll see, is not correctly utilizing the cardiac sphincter, or the cardiac sphincter is not is malfunctioning in the sense that it's not opening and closing properly, some of the stomach's acidic content may sort of push up the wrong way. This is a one-way tube, but sometimes if you have acid reflux, the reflux is that the flux that's supposed to be normal is going to go to the esophagus, and you'll feel this heartburn feeling right near the area of your heart. So it's a bit of a misnomer, cardiac sphincter, but nonetheless, be aware that this is where heartburn is usually felt. Now, the esophagus, I mentioned, is a muscular tube. That means it must utilize smooth muscle. What will it utilize the smooth muscle for? This is going to be utilized for that process that is seen throughout the digestive system that we mentioned before, which is peristalsis. This is going to be the process that allows and makes sure that the bolus, so that gets the bolus down to the stomach. It really makes sure that this large, semi-large structure that's been uh, a created through this oral cavity and swallowed by and uh, swallowed at the pharynx gets to the stomach correctly through these um, waves of relaxations and contractions known as peristalsis. So that covers our first look at the beginning of the digestive pathway. We've covered one, two, and three, oral cavity, pharynx, and esophagus. And remember, we've mentioned the sphincter, several different enzymes of digestion as well. In the next video, we'll continue this pathway by now looking at the next step, which is the stomach. And that will be highlighted um, in the next flowchart.